Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Winnipeg Jets post game show presented by Budweiser. I'm Sarah Lesky. Very happy to have Trevor Kidd to join me and for a win. Yes. Trevor, it's been a this little background while. Background music. I'm not used to the <laughs> Frank Sinatra here as fans are leaving the building. For it, absolutely. A big win for the Winnipeg Jets tonight. 2 1 over the Arizona Coyotes. Even more important, not just because of where the Jets are in the standings, but who is behind them and how they are playing tonight with the Nashville Predators winners and the Calgary mm. Flames at this point right now leading in their game as well. Huge. So the Jets come home. They had their back-to-back -back games on the road in Nashville and St. Louis. They got a win. They had a loss. They come home for one before heading back out. This was a game in which we described it a little bit, you and I, as Jekyll and Hyde. They got the all-important two points, but... How did you see this game when you look at it as a 60-minute enti entirety? I think that's what we're, we're continuing to see, some of the Jekyll and Hyde uh, with the team from a game-to-game -game basis. You mentioned coming off of the two-game road trip, a great game in Nashville, maybe not so good in St. Louis, a great first period here tonight against Arizona. Probably a second period uh, when you look at the shots, 18-3 to for Arizona in that second period. They might want to have that back. Had a bunch of power plays. The power play is still a bit of a struggle. However, as you mentioned, with the standings, with where the Jets are, where Nashville, and what's behind them, Calgary, this might be, you know, listen, don't ask how. Uh, they got the two points, and uh, I'm sure that's what, uh, yes, things to improve on. But uh, you saw Connor Hellebuck as, as the whistle went there. There was some exuberance uh, uh, he played a great game. He certainly kept them in. You could argue that uh, he was the difference maker tonight. But as a group, as a whole, you're watching the standings. You're watching the points. This is a huge two points for the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, it absolutely is. As always, we will take you shortly inside the room. We are waiting to hear from Connor Hellebuck, who will join us as well in this one. So let's take a little bit more and look at the first period with it. They were able to jump out to the mm. lead. Let's start with Nikolai Ehlers, who got the Winnipeg Jets on the board. Not only with goal, but with the second effort in order to get there. Nice job, and I mean, this is a breakaway, and no one's catching Nick Ehlers uh, when you give him that much time and space on a breakaway. And uh, what I like about it, you see, again, this team is fighting and scratching and clawing and looking for emotion, uh, just as a little celebration there after the goal. But great job. You mentioned it, staying with it. There's the rebound. He tries to go five-hole, a little bit high on that five-hole opportunity, but doesn't right away peel off, gets that rebound back, and again, stays with it and puts it uh, high over the blocker. And then you think the effort that seen, we saw, obviously, the fight the other night in St. Louis yes. against Braden Shen, yes. and just trying to, you look for leaders, you look for your marquee players to help will you along, and and certainly Nikolai Ehlers stepping up. Second goal, the game for the Jets coming off the stick of Adam Lowry. Game winner, and yes. Absolutely, and the patience that saw from Morgan Barron with the assist in order to get him there. Well, there's a whole bunch that happens here, and it's a great uh, play on the breakout here, and I'm glad they caught, uh, captured this from uh, that uh, deep in that right corner there because it's a one heck of a kind of a long bomb pass across the slot. So great heads up. Good patience for, for Barron there, but Pionk, you see that heads up there, that little per uh, peripheral vision to find Barron. And then right here, look at the little sauce on this pass to get it over to uh, Lowry. So, so a great heads up play by Pionk. Nice little saucer pass there. You see the puck is bobbling, both for Barron and even as Adam Lowry shot that, he's having to fight off that puck, not maybe cooperating for the Winnipeg Jets and on that play, but nonetheless puts it in the back of the net. Yeah, and a shorthanded goal for Lowry as well. That's his 10th goal of the season. As promised, Connor Hellebuck joining us now. Connor being the first star of this game tonight, stopping 29 of the 30 shots that he faced. Connor, we've just been discussing the the game, how we saw it over the three periods. What did you see in front of you tonight? Yeah, you know, it took everyone tonight. Um, our details, we had the block shots, we had the control rebounds. It was it was a full team effort. Um, I thought our offensive zone four check was great, so um, we played a good game. When you look at the way we described it a little bit, the first period we thought from you know, an offensive standpoint, certainly, that the team was maybe getting more production than what we saw in the second period. Can you describe what it was like in the second intermission going into the third when you know how much is on the line at this point in the season? Yeah, you know, some uh, tough things are said. Um, it, it just guys know that we need to bring it, and um, I think that's exactly what we did. We responded well, and like I've always said, we got great character in the room and I think it showed tonight. When you look at your preparing for a team like the Coyotes, you know that they've been able to have success recently. You know some of the young firepower that they have. We saw a lot of Clayton Keller. Tonight. 
What is your preparation like for a game like this in terms of video? Do you look at specific players? Do you look more at the team as a whole? Yeah, I'll study power play, but um, past that, I got to make sure my game's on point. Um, it doesn't matter who's coming down, I got to treat them the same way, and you never know what kind of shot and what kind of sniper you're going to have. So um, you just got to treat every game the same way. And, and I find your process always so interesting for it, for you to make sure that your game is on right. What are some of the details that you look to? Well, I'll make sure my depth, my depth is good, and um, I'll make sure I'm controlling my rebounds. It's so crucial. Um, and that, and I got to battle, battle every single night, and that's so crucial in this league. Finally, you head out onto the road again, only home for this one game before heading out now to the West Coast for it. What is the approach of this group have to be as you head into the three games in California? I think we got to build off our third period. Um, I think we know which way we want to play and how, how to do it. So um, we got to build on it and, and bring it every single night. Thanks so much for the time. I always appreciate it, Connor. Thank you. Some tough words. Is that what he said? <laughs> yes. Well, you can only, we were talking about, you can only imagine what some of the words were, whether it be from players or coaches going um, into that second intermission. Well, I think our conversation was, and going back old school, 15, 20 years ago, was there a stick broken? Was there maybe a coach throwing a garbage can around, something like that? And maybe neither one of those happened, but uh, Connor Hellbuck saying that uh, there was maybe some verbiage, uh, tough language uh, amongst the group uh, between the second and third. And you have to agree. I mean, the second period wasn't that good for the Winnipeg Jets, but they came out in the third, and I would agree with them. The power play, yes, didn't produce. However, they did clog things up in the neutral zone and played a lot better and took some of that momentum away that Arizona had in that second period. You didn't see as much uh, in the third. Which was the most animated coach you had over the years? Oh, boy. Because um, you must have had some good ones. I had some beauties for sure. <laughs> uh, Pierre Paget okay. uh, in Calgary. Yeah. He was arguably the most animated. Uh, Mike Keenan in Florida wow. was a little bit uh, of a tougher variety, <laughs> um, but there was a few moments when Pierre Paggi would come in and give it, where you just had to have the towel over your, make sure you're not making eye contact fair, fair with anyone enough. in the dressing room. Fair enough. All right, let's head into the Jets dressing room right now and hear from Josh Morrissey. So much talk about starts lately. You guys get a uh, nice play from Nick early and a, and a solid for peri thir first period. Pardon me. What led to that? Yeah, I came out, did a lot of the right things. A uh, good kill early. Uh, uh, I think we were on our toes and a couple of good defensive reads led to some chances. Nice play by Nicky and um, you know, nice, nice goal there uh, from from Laos and Bears. Heck of a pass and um, yeah, it was a good start for sure. Good first period. Penalty must have been a bit scary, but it was kind of one that you probably felt like you had to take it given the quality of the chance. Yeah, those things happen sometimes. Obviously, you don't want to take penalties, but uh, guys did a great job on the kill. Just in terms of the second, obviously, it seemed like they found their legs a little bit. How did you guys feel you handled it, especially going into the third as you were able to keep it at 2-1? Uh, yeah, just staying with it, obviously. Um, they've been playing well lately, and um, you know they, they've got a lot of skill and specifically a couple lines that... Um, you know, we'll make plays, and uh, um, like I said, they're, they're playing well, so um, they kind of took it to us. We had some huge saves, and uh, we responded well in the third. What's said there in the dressing room after that second period? Uh, you know, we got to get going back on our toes. Um, we want to, you know, a replay of the first period, not the second, so I uh, thought we did that and uh, drew some penalties, moving our feet and winning puck battles, and, um, you know, that was able to put the game away. What did you like about your structure in the third? There seemed that you were filtering them to the middle and constantly turning the puck off their stick uh, coming to your blue line. Yeah, I think we were just on our on our toes and a lot more aggressive in skating. I thought in the second we just kind of sagged back and um, you know we were kind of creating too many one on one battles all over the ice uh, and not winning them. Um, so that's kind of the tale of two periods. First we were, second we weren't. And, I thought we got back to it again in the third. Is that an X's and O's thing? Did you guys change anything you were doing or just get to what you should have been doing? Um, you know, I think sometimes when you play these teams, um, you know, people just think, oh, you're going to play Arizona they're at where they're at in the standings and, uh, you know, doing what they're doing trade-wise and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, they've got a lot of good players and they're playing free and, and playing hard. And so there's going to be momentum swings in the game. Uh, I think it's just getting back to our identity and you know not worrying about who we're playing, but uh, being aggressive on our toes and um, you know just quicker to lose pucks, quicker to to battles, to um, outman them. And um, I thought we did a good job in the third.
You've seen a lot of saves from Connor Hellebuck. Just a thought on the, the paddle stop when he was kind of out, outside of his crease there. Yeah, just uh, another add, add to his highlight reel, I guess. Uh, and he's been incredible for us, certainly all, all year and for a long time. And, um, you know, uh, when they really had their push in the second period, um, he made some massive saves and, uh, um, you know, gave us a chance to regroup in the intermission and come out in the third and um, play a lot better. So, um, yeah, that that's what he does for us, and we're certainly happy he's on our side. One of the things that I thought was interesting that Josh Morrissey spoke about, and we do hear players often talk about it, when a team is out of the mm. playoffs for it, that idea of playing free. I mean, we heard it a little bit when describing a game against St. Louis, the Blues yeah. can play a little bit freer. Guys are obviously playing for contracts and some for their careers for the, for the next season. But you can't take any team lightly in this <laughs> league ever, but especially when you look at this time of year as well, when opposing teams are looking to play spoilers. Yes, that's what I was just, that is what they're playing yeah. for, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that's it. And I agree with everything you said there about, uh, I mean, it's a young team, they are playing loose. And, and to me, you saw it a little bit in that second period, certainly in the third, with some of the pinches, being aggressive, their defensemen trying to really trap Winnipeg at the top of the circles as they were trying to break the puck out might not be that aggressive if you're in a playoff position in regards to the threat. If you're not there, if that support isn't there, well, now you're having odd man chances come to you. So Arizona is willing to take a few of those chances. But you mentioned, I mean, part of the joy, part of what they're playing for, part of what they're getting ready for on a game day is coming in here and playing spoiler and taking two points away from Winnipeg. So uh, a tough game. I mean, Arizona's a young team. They're, they're quick. That uh, Keller, Keller player, boy, he's, uh, he's got yeah. a lot of talent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's head back into the room. It's time to hear from Adam Lowry. Adam, lots of talk about starts of late. You guys get two first period goals. What led to the success? Yeah, um, I think just the details in the game and the chances we, we were giving up in the first period, I think you know, we were kind of real aware of them using the seams and kind of finding the backside. And, you know, we talked a lot about defending off the rush, you know, especially after last game. I thought we did a pretty good job in the first. And got away from it in the second, but, you know, fortunately, Helly, Helly's in net and, you know, he played great and, you know, gave us a chance to win. What did you see, speaking of Helly, uh, paddle save? That. I mean, what goes into that? Yeah, yeah. you know what? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think we, we've seen so many great saves by him, and you know he, he's never out of the play. I think. Um, you know, I think of the one in Vegas earlier in the year where he reaches back, you know, gets it with a stick, and he's just, you know, he's got such good hand eyes, reads the game so well, and you know he had told you he knew the guy was going low coming back, so. Um, like I said, he really gave us a chance to win, you know, especially with the way we played in the second period. Well, Milk has been a pretty tough goaltender to play against, especially in this building lately. Was it just to shoot it as hard as fast as I possibly can when he got that chance to turn one? Yeah, usually he doesn't let in very many here, right? So, um, yeah, I, I think anytime you get a two on one, you want to hit it hard, you want to get it above the pad. And you know, Barry made such a great pass, you know, it made my job pretty easy and, you know, landed flat on my stick. and. Unfortunately, I got all of it. So, yeah, like you said, though, he, he's played extremely well against us here. And, you know, again, he, he only gave up two. He gave them a chance to win. You can hear the rest of Adam Lowry later on the Winnipeg Jets website. But let's head right into the Matt Frost Media Center to hear from head coach Rick Bonus. We make a mistake. So, like, we went through this early in the year. Then we went through a stretch where we got the first goal. That's hockey. We'll yeah, play through it. I think you've actually scored first more often than you haven't, but yeah. that streak is just, I guess, one of those it's things. Right. That it's one of those things. You, again, uh, where we, it, it, if we came out of the, the start of the, every period and we were slow and we got, that, that hasn't been the case at all. We've had good starts. We just haven't scored on those starts. And even in Nashville, we're all over them and they come down and score. So you play your way through it. Morris sees the early penalty. I mean, he negates a chance. It's fine, but does that make the heart tick a little bit? Extra? <laughs> yeah, but we our penalty killer's been pretty good all year, so you got to trust them. But you don't want to give up a power play goal that early for sure. What changed in the second? Uh, we just uh, we stopped uh, we stopped attacking. We got soft with the puck, and um, they were fighting to get back in the game. 
Uh, we got hemmed in our zone a couple of shifts, which took all this all the steam out of our game. But when that happens, somebody's got to get it nice to puck and reset. And we weren't even able to get it. So they had a, we had a couple of bad shifts in the second period. Uh, we didn't spend any time in their zone because when we were changing, we just had no flow to the game whatsoever. Is that what led to the shuffling? You mixed up your top six yeah. heading into the third? Yep. The improvement was there, but did you get yep. enough out of that? Will you go back to it? We'll, we'll see. Josh kind of described in the third period, it was a matter of you guys kind of getting back on your toes. Is that what you saw? And did you like what you kind of saw from your group in terms of defending a, a two one yeah. lead but still attack? And it's funny, the, the second period, the bench was really, it got quiet because they could see what was going on. Third period, there was a lot of energy on the bench and that took itself over, uh, out on the ice. And we had everyone going. And uh, But it, it, the bench was really energized in the third period. They knew what was at stake. You knew we had to find a way to win this game, but that's three games with that team, and they're all 2-1. So maybe they're a whole lot better team than people realize, which they are. Uh, they move the puck really well. There's a four-man rush every time. They're hard to play against, and sometimes you give the opposition some credit and give them credit for the second period. But again, that third period, we played the right way. We did all the little things necessary. We controlled the pace of the game. We played on our toes. Much harder team to play against. We were pressuring them all over the ice. And that's Winnipeg Jet Hockey. Good. Thanks. I love the way he ends it every time. Good? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> and he's done for it. Just, we heard Adam Lowry speak about Connor Hellebuck and Josh Bussia as well. But yes. the paddle save. I mean, Connor Hellebuck, 29 out of the 30 shots Vasey stopped. Key, though, not only in the saves that he made, but sometimes the crucial times. The timing of them, right? He made one real big one at the start of the first period, and you heard them talk about Josh Morrissey taking that uh, penalty uh, early in the first period. And it was, uh, again, he was he, he was real good throughout, but uh, there was a couple, again, opportunistic uh, saves uh, early uh, in that uh, first period, and certainly uh, uh, in the second period. And I think, well, there's the crossbar, but here you'll see the, right there, that's the paddle save that, both Josh Morrissey and Adam Lars. So a little bit lucky there, top the goal post. You got a, a nice one there, but uh, it, it was funny to hear, uh, I, th I think it was Adam Lowry would say that uh, Connor Hellebuck knew what was happening there, let him have the goal post and uh, knew that he was gonna put that puck low to, for him to get his paddle on it. So he was solid tonight. Uh, air, you know, the guys mentioned, the coach mentioned, uh, Arizona really took it to Winnipeg. There was a lot of flow, a lot of speed, a lot of creativity by Arizona in that second period. I mentioned the shots 18 to three. Uh, they were hemmed in and, and a couple shifts there. I think it was about, boy, it felt like about seven minutes of uh, zone time in Winnipeg's end yeah. and Connor Elbeck really held the fort. All right, so they go out on the road now, as mentioned, this was just the one quick stop at home as is so often it seems been the case recently, but they head out now to California for yep. their next three games. And you look at the California teams and the way that they've been playing in terms of their last 10 games, this is heading into today. I mean, Anaheim, San Jose, obviously not in the playoff picture, but they, Anaheim has just had some success recently. We know San Jose's one win came against Winnipeg. LA Kings have just been a juggernaut as they continue to fight Vegas for their top spot in the Pacific and in Amazing the West. Amazing what that goaltender uh, trade for Los Angeles yes. has done since that uh, Corpusolo from uh, Columbus. That has made a huge difference for that hockey team. Absolutely. So put quickly for us, put your coach's hat on for you. You go out to California. We know that continues, continuing to add to their total obviously and try to create a little bit more space between themselves or at least continue to yes. keep the current space that exists between themselves and nashville and calgary behind them or at what for you if you were the coach would be the priority going into that trip the one thing i liked about uh, uh rick bonus's interview there's their little comment about the third period and the energy on the bench there is you know a frustration here there's negativity uh, around the team and, and we talked about it. I mean the Jekyll and Hyde part of this and the power play I the, mean the power play there are struggles uh, within yeah. this team right now and that comment alone is to me what if you're a coach if you're the group that's generally speaking what you want to focus on is that positive energy break it down from there I mean listen it, the, the continued part about this is wanting you know Nick Ehlers was one of the stars here tonight 
you want your best players to be your best players. And to me, when you, you know, you're going on the road trip, you want to come back from this road trip. If you're a coach saying, my best players sold the farm. They, they led with the urgency, they led with the desperation, they led with the details, they led with that energy that he spoke about in the third period. Yeah, and well, just 10 games left now, it's hard to believe in some ways that we, uh, we're getting towards the, towards end, the end of yeah. the season for it. You take a look, these are the games that remain for the Winnipeg Jets. Or it certainly some interesting ones, particularly when you look at April, that <laughs> final week. Oh, it should be should be a good one. Things will certainly be kept interesting around here. As always, make sure you tune in to WinnipegJets.com as well as all social media channels. We will have all of it covered for you as the Jets, as mentioned, head out now to California for their next three games. Trevor, always appreciate it when you are on with us for this post-game show. And that is a wrap from us here at Canada Life Centre. This has been the Winnipeg Jets post-game show presented by Budweiser.